Construction is notoriously known as a dangerous industry, and as a result, many efforts have been implemented to improve health and safety in the construction industry. Some positive outcomes can be seen, especially in the context of developed countries. However, the conditions in developing countries are different. They are facing some unique challenges which hinder the improvement of their health and safety performance. My name is Risa Yoshia Sunindio and today we will see some underlying characteristics of construction in developing countries and how they have an impact on health and safety performance in their construction industries. And we will look at Ghana specifically as a case study for this research. The construction industry is a significant industry. It contributes to economic growth and development of nations. In Ghana, for example, the construction industry contributes more than 30% to the gross domestic product or GDP, which is the, the country's second largest contributor. It also contributes to infrastructure development, such as roads, water supply, electricity lines, and so on, which can boost the production of goods and services in a particular country. And then, in a developing country like Ghana, where unemployment is relatively high, the construction industry is an important source of jobs for the unemployed or unskilled workers in the country. In Ghana, the industry employs 7% of the country's workforce, and the number may actually be higher in reality because the number of, of informal workers is not recorded. However, despite the importance of the construction industry for national economy, construction activities sadly pose serious health and safety risks to workers users of construction facilities, and also the public. A report by the International Labour Organization, or ILO, acknowledged that the construction industry contributes about 30% of fatalities in the world's occupational settings. The rates of occupational accidents in developing countries are unacceptably high and it can increase parallelly with the pace of industri industrialization. So the occupational fatality rate in Ghana, as you can see on the table here, is 21.1 fatalities per 100,000 workers, which are much higher than the rates in developed countries. There have been many studies which aim to improve health and safety in the construction industry of developing countries. While all these studies provide in-depth analysis and evidence of factors that affect effective implementation of construction health and safety in developing countries, they still do not consider the implications of the characteristics and foundation upon which the industry is built and operates. So therefore, our research posits that the structure of the construction industry in developing countries and its inherent characteristics expose the industry to health and safety challenges. We collected data from construction practitioners in Ghana to confirm the characteristics of the construction industry in the country and how they may have an impact on health and safety performance. So as you can see over here, we collect the data from uh, practitioners with different professional background, engineering, quantity surveying, architecture, project management, and those who are involved in managing health and safety. And all of them, or oh well, many of them have extensive work experience in the construction industry. So more than 80% had more than 10 years of experience. 
They also came from different types of organization, including consultants, contractors, and also uh, government institutions. We found seven characteristics of the construction industry in developing countries, which affect their health and safety performance. The top three characteristics are particularly important. The first one, lack of skilled and educated workforce. So a survey within the Ghanaian construction industry revealed that among the workforce involved in the sector, 67% are unskilled, uh, about 25% are semi-skilled, and only 8% are highly skilled. So this has been attributed to the limited capacity of existing technical and vocational training institutes. And then the informal apprentice, apprentice, uh, apprenticeship system is also not well developed to train highly skilled workforce because sometimes the master craftsmen also who, who do the training may themselves have limited skills. Furthermore, what is often important to workers on the construction sites is actually the wage that they would earn for working on site, thereby making other issues uh, relating to conditions of employment, uh, including health and safety, secondary to them. The second key characteristic is reliance on labor-intensive methods. So labor in Ghana is comparatively cheap, making the adoption of labor-based methods a more economic option than equipment-intensive intensive or capital-intensive methods. The capital cost of buying equipment and machinery is expensive for contractors in Ghana, considering the problems they face in accessing credit facilities for, for, for those items. And this condition compels many, especially the smaller contractors, to specialize in labor-based construction methods. Accordingly, construction in developing countries, again like Ghana, involves more workers per activity on site. Typically, two to ten times as many workers per activity compared with developed countries. As a result, more workers, mostly unskilled and uneducated, are exposed to health and safety hazards. The third one, lack of single regulatory authority. So there is no single government agency in Ghana that oversees the construction sector. Responsibility for and jurisdiction over uh, the built environment are actually shared between Ministry of Water Resources, Works and Housing and Ministry of Roads and Highways. Besides, the Ministry of Employment and Labour Relations deals with the labour and employment aspects of the sector, while the Ministry of Education partly deals with vocational or technical training, research and development. The somewhat inconsistent and ad hoc nature of construction policies reflects the way responsibility for the sector is divided across these ministries. The non-existence of a central body within the construction industry is a disincentive to the enforcement of health and safety regulations within the industry. Besides the three key characteristics we explained earlier, our research also revealed some additional characteristics of the industry which affect the implementation of health and safety. Number four, large number of small contractors. So the construction industry in Ghana is characterized by a, a large number of small firms because the industry presents 
little barriers to entry and this allows even individuals and business entities without the requisite resources, personnel or qualifications to register as construction firms. And of course, it is acknowledged that small contractors generally do not manage health and safety risks as effectively as larger contractors. The financial fragility and instability of small contractors can impede the extent to which good health and safety practices can be adopted. For these small companies, business survival is their top priority and therefore health and safety issues are not of great concern. Number five, informal sector participation. So these informal sector enterprises are usually not registered according to regulations and workers as a result fall outside of the framework of labor regulation. Consequently, uh, regulations or legislations such as those relating to labor, conditions of employment and health and safety for the informal construction workers are generally neglected. Number six, the procurement system itself. Generally, the method of project procurement in the construction industry is in Ghana is competitive tendering. In developing countries, contractors gain little competitive advantage from good health and safety management because the industry culture compels contractors to drive their prices low. In this case, a way to cut costs is to cut corners when it comes to health and safety. And number seven, reliance on temporary labor force. Many temporary and casual workers have less access to training, particularly on health and safety, as the contractors may not be willing to invest uh, to train non-permanent workers. So the abundance of cheap labor in developing countries means that construction firms can dismiss employees who perform unsatisfactorily and replace them with new employees easily. So this causes them to accept work in unacceptably high risk situations without complaining. So in conclusions, we need to pay attention on these seven characteristics of the construction industry in developing countries if you want to improve health and safety in this context. Consider them and address these characteristics, then we have the right foundation to improve health and safety in the construction industry of developing countries. This research has been published in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health. Uh, the title of the paper uh, is Characteristics of the Construction Industry in Developing Countries and Its Implications for Health and Safety, an Exploratory Study in Ghana. I would like to acknowledge my co-authors as well. So this research is actually based on the PhD study of Elijah Frimpong Boadu. And also uh, I acknowledge my colleague Cynthia Changsing Wang. Thank you.